while I was teaching on the application of a state diagram in foods, students asked me whether any video is available on this topic. In addition, many research students in our group are working on the development and applications of a state diagram in foods. Considering this, I have developed my first video on the application of a state diagram in air drying process. Moreover, this video would be interesting to the research students in other universities working on the development of a state diagram. In addition, professionals working in the food industry could also use this video to understand and apply state diagram in developing their food products and processes. First, we need to understand the drying process. Apple slices need to be prepared and placed inside the cabinet dryer. We need to set the dryer at a desired temperature that is 80 degrees C. After drying, the apple slices need to be cooled and stored at a specific temperature. First, I need to explain the problem statement. Initial temperature of apple is 20 degrees C and moisture content is 90%. Air drying temperature is 80 degrees C and final moisture content first 20%, second 16% and third 4%. We need to draw the drying path for two storage temperature. First product is stored at 30 degrees C and we need to identify the state of dried product and to determine whether it would be stable or unstable considering glass transition concept. Second, product is stored at minus 10 degrees C and we need to identify the state of dried product and to determine it would be stable or unstable. I have kept the problem statement in the description box. State diagram is a stability map presents different states or phases as a function of water and temperature. In 1986, U.S. scientists Dr. Levin and Dr. Sled highlighted the applications of a state diagram in foods. After that, a state diagrams are being widely used in food processing and preservation. First, I would like to explain different components of the state diagram. X axis is the solid mass fraction, Y axis is the temperature. F is the freezing curve and it decreases with the increase of solids due to freezing point depression. G is the glass transition line and it decreases with the decrease of solids due to plasticization of water. A, B, C, D, E are the maximal freeze concentration condition. You could find the definition of the terminology in our recent published paper. Reference link is given in the description. Point A is the ultimate maximal freeze concentration melting temperature that is TM dash, which is maximal frozen water is formed. B is the ultimate maximal freeze concentration glass transition temperature Tg triple dash that is glass transition before melting. These two points are measured by DSC using defined protocol. C is the hypothetical maximal freeze concentration temperature Tg double dash and it is defined as the hypothetical maximal freeze concentration glass transition temperature that is intersection of the freezing curve to the glass transition line by maintaining similar curvature of freezing curve F. D is the conceptual maximal freeze concentration glass transition temperature that is TA, TG dash and it is the vertical line crossing through TM dash to the glass line. E is the conceptual maximal freeze concentration solids X S dash and it is defined as the vertical line passing through TM dash and TZ dash and crossing X axis. 
this concept may be difficult but I have tried to make it simple. I'll prepare another video to explain how to develop state diagrams of foods. First, we need to locate the initial condition as initial temperature 20 degrees C and moisture content 90%. Second, we could locate the air drying temperature line at 80 degrees C and final points are contain 20% and we can mark point 0.2. Air drying path is shown from point 1 to 2. Point 0.2 will be lower than the drying temperature 80 degrees C due to evaporative cooling. The drying path is in the rubbery region therefore shrinkage reaction will occur. The product is then cooled from point 0.2 to point 0.3 at 30 degrees C without no loss of moisture. Location of point 0.3 at 30 degrees C is in the rubbery region and product will not be stable based on the glass transition concept. Because the glass transition concept says product will be stable at or below glass transition. Similarly, if product is dried to 16% moisture, then final drying temp point will be 4. After cooling to 30 degree, the product will be at 0.5 and is still in the rubber region. Finally, the strategy to dry up to 4% moisture and then final point will be at 6. After cooling to 30 degree, the product will be at 0.7 and dry apple will be in the glassy region. It will be stable since at or below glass transition temperature product is stable. Now we could find out what would happen if we store the dried apple at minus 10 degrees C. First, I would like to locate the drying conditions 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. Now if we store the dried apple at minus 10 degrees C. Location of the dried apples for 20% will be at 0.8 and 16% would be at 0.9 and 4% would be at 0.10. Now we can see 0.8 is in the rubbery region 0.9 is just below glass transition and 0.10 must be below glass transition. Therefore, 0.9 and 0.10 will be stable. In addition, dried apple at 0.10 would be most stable since it is much below the glass transition line. In this video, I have explained a simple example of the applications of a state diagram in food processing. In forthcoming videos, I'll present more applications of the state diagram in foods. Thank you for watching this video.